Welcome to the K20 Center's Zoom Into Your Career video series. These online career expos give students a way to explore many interesting careers and learn about their career options from volunteer professionals. Greg Hallman is the founder and CEO of Occupath, a virtual reality company that focuses on workplace training. I'm very excited to be sharing this time with you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thanks to all the students out there uh, watching this. Um, right now, I am in Mexico visiting family for, um, for part of the Christmas break. Uh, we kind of took our break a little bit early, a longer break. But even though I'm down here, I'm still working. And um, as Will said, my work is in virtual reality, but not uh, gaming virtual reality. Um, it's, um, more, uh, it's more for training, right? More for people who work um, every day. Uh, and the things that they have to learn at work, they can learn in virtual reality. So uh, I'm, I can share my screen, right, Will? Yeah, you're good to share it. Just hit the green share button and it should pop okay. up. So I wanna show you guys my YouTube channel. Um, you know, it's more of a work YouTube channel. Um, are you able to see that channel, Will? Yes. Did you, okay. when you shared your screen, did you make sure it said um, share computer audio? I don't think I did. Let's okay, see. so if you go to the top and hit like options, there should be a drop down somewhere it should say like share computer audio or share okay. computer sound. There it is, share computer sound. There you go. Now we can Very we cool. should be able to hear it. And if you don't hear it, please let me know. So the first video I'm gonna show you, it's a real short video. I want to show everyone. It's a video that was created by the Oklahoma State Department of Education. And it talks a little bit about my background. And it talks it's the same topic that we're talking about today why you should uh why you would be interested in going into this kind of field as well why would you be interested in going into vr and how you could do it so this is a real quick video that talks about that vr as a tool to help educators teach their students about subjects or to see things that they normally wouldn't get to see it's obviously very powerful it's immersive it makes you feel like you're actually there my name is Greg Hallman. I graduated from Class and School of Advanced Studies and also from the University of Oklahoma. And I am the CEO of Occupath. Well, growing up in South Oklahoma City and in a low-income home, there were a lot of challenges growing up. Uh, we struggled financially. Um, we had a lot of gang activity growing up, but fortunately I had very strong and supportive parents that valued education. The Thunder was announcing this competition. They were looking for startups, looking for small businesses with ideas, especially in educational technology. And I thought, well, I'm going to submit this idea to see if they like it. Thunder Launchpad has been instrumental in helping me figure out the best path for this idea. I've always been interested in how technology can be used to teach. And I thought, man, I'd really like to do something with virtual reality. So I started Occupath. If I am a teacher at low-income middle school, chances are the students aren't going to be able to ever take a trip, maybe in the near future, to visit the ruins in Rome, to visit the Colosseum. Through virtual reality, they can go there without having to leave the classroom. All that is what is what makes me passionate about this work and makes me excited about getting up and going to work each day. Right now, a typical day at work would include doing a lot of research uh, in terms of you know, how we can figure out the best way to utilize virtual reality and augmented reality in education. Um, we're also working on a project right now for the U.S. Navy. Newly recruited sailors, they're learning about the physics of the ocean in class, and they're going to be using our technology to learn about it. If I were a student today interested in working somehow in virtual reality or even augmented reality, what I would do is I would get to a computer and download a program called Unity. It's free. And also another program called Blender. Any high school student in the state of Oklahoma, you have access to career tech and chances are there's a career tech school close to you that can teach you how to use a lot of these programs. Technology is growing by leaps and bounds every day here in Oklahoma City. More and more you see more and more tech-based companies coming out of Oklahoma. We are an up-and-coming community that is really growing and developing. Here at Occupath, we are closing the skill gap and empowering the next generation of workforce through virtual reality. Awesome. So yeah, the, the reason, so like I said, the reason I wanted to show that video is that it kind of it kind of encapsulates everything that um, I'm supposed to be talking to you guys about today. Um, and 
Will, do you know if some of the other schools are having problems uh, hearing or, or seeing the video? It looks like maybe they're having some technical difficulties. Would, would um, you know no, I haven't had anyone ask about it. I could okay. hear it fine and I could see it fine. So as long as they um, haven't said anything, they should have been okay. Cool. So I'll just keep going, right? Yep. You should be good. Awesome. And I have one more video that I want to show with you that I want to share with you, with everybody. Um, this video is about um, a project that we're, we're working on right now with, uh, with the Air Force. So the first video was more, a little, uh, more about me, I guess you could say, and more about how you can go into VR as a potential career. But now I'm going to show you a video about a project that we're specifically working on right now with the Air Force. Hi, I'm Greg Holman, founder and CEO of Occupath. Occupath is an ed tech company that creates virtual reality content for workplace training. Because we are first and foremost an education company, we place a high priority on how people learn and trainee learning outcomes. This sets us apart from other VR companies who, for example, may focus on only entertainment as opposed to training. When it comes to learning theories, our work gravitates mostly towards embodied cognition, which can be understood as learning by doing. Placing a trainee in a virtual environment that matches the special elements of their actual workplace is what we believe gives VR an inherent advantage over outdated teaching methods such as PowerPoints. Our virtual reality-based training experiences are poised to help solve several pain points for the United States Air Force, especially in terms of maintenance personnel training. Through our technology, trainees can acquire skills using virtual aircraft that match the room scale dimensions where they perform their work day in and day out. The environment supports several participants at once so trainees can train in groups or alongside their instructor. Our software gives instructors and trainees access to data analytics as a way to review performance. We have also incorporated machine learning algorithms that can recommend training modules for trainees who need remediation. We're living in an exciting time of discovery for virtual reality, which is why we're so excited to share our solution with the Air Force to help make maintenance training cheaper, faster, and safer. Cool. So those are the, 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 the two videos I wanted to share. And um, I know I, there are some other um, topics or another points that I'm supposed to cover that I was that were suggested um, that I talked to you guys about today. I'm going to go ahead and just pull those up. Um, but yeah, um, it asked, you know, it told me, it says here, talk about the knowledge and skills needed for this career. I don't know if you heard in the, in the first video, I mentioned two um, software programs. One is called Unity and one is called Blender. Uh, anybody with a computer, whether you have a Mac or a PC, you can download those two apps for free. And even though you guys are in middle school, you can already start learning how to create 3D models. So like, let's say, go ahead. Will you oh, no, you're good. No. Okay. So um, if, there's a, if there's somebody listening to this right now, watching this, that is like, you know what, I want to make, I want to make uh, animated cartoons. Like, I think I want to work at Pixar. Like, I think I want to make the next, um, you know, Toy Story movie out there. Like, I want to make my own movies in, in 3D. It, or maybe you want to make video games. Maybe you want to make the next Call of Duty. Um, you know, maybe you're uh, just interested and what I'm interested in is using this same technology for, for movies and video, video games and using it to make it educational for, so people can learn with them. If you're interested in any of that, what I would do if I were you is, as a middle school student is to start opening up these 3D models and you can open any 3D model in the program called Blender. And like I said, Blender, and it's just like a blender, you know, in your kitchen where you make your mom will make you a banana shake or whatever. So if, if, you, if you can get this program called Blender, download it onto your laptop, you can start playing around with it. If you have a Chromebook, it's not going to work on a Chromebook. But if you have any other kind of like um, um, a Microsoft Surface or a, you know, maybe you can find an old computer that's Windows based or that is Mac based, you can even go to the thrift store. Like one of the monitors I have at work, I bought at the thrift store on Southwest 44th and Penn not too far from Jefferson Middle School. It costs $13. And so if you don't have a computer that can download Blender, you can get one for really cheap at, um, at, at even at a thrift store or a pawn shop because you know there's so many computers now and it's okay if the computer is like five or 10 years old because all you're using it for is to just uh, to learn uh, how these 3D, 3D models work. 
So that's the kind of stuff I did actually. Um, but I didn't do it. I, I didn't do it till I was actually in college, like playing around, learning how to do Photoshop, learning how to make videos. But if I could go back in time, I would have started all that stuff when I was you guys' age, because then I would be way ahead now. Um, so yeah, so so the in terms of other skills, um, you know, when it comes to having your own business, maybe you're in, maybe you're in the in watching this right now, you're listening to this right now, and you don't care about virtual reality, you don't care about video games, that's okay. But you do want to have your own business one day, like I have my own business. There's a lot of good things that a lot of advantages that come from having your own business. Like one of the one of the good things I like about having my own business is I can make my own schedule. If I work somewhere else, maybe my boss would be like, no, you can't talk to a bunch of middle school students at one o'clock. You got work to do. But I'm the boss. So I decide when I do what I want to do, when I want to do it. And here I am doing it in Mexico. And even though I'm here on vacation, I'm still able to talk to you guys and still able to get some work done, even though I'm here with my family. And that's another advantage of having your own business. Um, so some of the skills that you're going to need to have if you're going to have your own business, obviously time management. Because if you're, you're, if you're the boss of your company, there's nobody going to be telling you, hey, you, you, this is doing a week. You need to get it done. There's nobody going to be telling you, hey, um, you shouldn't be watching Judge Judy right now. You should be working. You got you to gotta control yourself and you got to control your own time. So even though I really want to watch The Price is Right, I know that I got something due at 2 o'clock. And I, I, I have to challenge myself and stay on top of myself to get it done. So that's what you call time management. And that's something you can also start working on now, even in middle school. You can start using the calendar on your cell phone. Raise your hand if you have a, if you have a smartphone out there. Uh, and the reason I say that is because most people do. Or maybe you have access to your mom and dad's smartphone. Well, there's something on the smartphone called the calendar that not a lot of middle school students have. And the reason I know that is because I used to be a middle school teacher. And, you know, I, I know kids that are middle school, I, have, I, I used to be a high school teacher. And I would, I would talk to high school kids and I would tell them, okay, we're going to have a meeting next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. And they would forget and they wouldn't come to the meeting. And I said, what happened? Oh, I forgot. Okay, did you put a reminder in your phone? Um, no, I don't know how to do that. So one thing you can start doing now is use help, having your cell phone help you to keep track of things, not just time and time management but also when i say time management it's not just about wasting time it's also about setting goals in the future so if you know you have a big homework assignment due in two weeks you ask the teacher what day is it due you put it into your phone and the phone reminds you you could have it to remind you a day before two days before an hour before um, and you should start doing that now even though you're middle school you can start getting in that habit now and that'll help whenever you have your own business um, other skills you know uh, if you feel like you're a shy person um, you should start trying to figure out ways to um, to be more outgoing. Um, and one of the best things that I could, best advice that I could give you about um, being outgoing and talking to people is people love to talk about themselves, right? Here I am talking about myself, right? And my life. It's easy for me to talk about myself because um, everybody likes talking about themselves. But if you're too shy to talk about yourself, ask other people questions to get them talking, right? And that conversation will get started. So when you ask them questions like, you know, what do you do for a living? Why do you do it? Um, what's your favorite uh, class at your school? Who's your favorite teacher or whatever? Who's your least favorite? What's your least favorite class, least favorite subject? And when you ask these people questions, like maybe you don't even care about what their favorite subject is, but because you ask them that, it starts a conversation and it opens up the, the, the lines of communication between you guys. and. Uh, it's easier for you to start talking about yourself and to start maybe asking them for favors. Another big advice I have for you guys is, you know, obviously I want everybody, I would love for everybody listening to this to go to college or to go to career tech, you know, to do something with your life outside after high school. After high school, you should have a plan. Um, you can start thinking about what your plan is going to be after high school. Don't just like go work automatically after high school. If you have to, that's fine. But if I were you, I would not just immediately work after high school. I would somehow try to better myself whether it's career tech you can even do career tech while you're in high school um you know going to college somewhere doing something productive to try to build yourself up to learn more things after high school and one of the things you should do to get to that point to get to that period of, of life after high school where you're learning you're still taking classes after high school it's important that you find some teachers that can be your friends so i'm not just talking about teachers um what I mean by them being your friends is, you know, find some teachers that you think that you're cool with and that you're, you know, you feel comfortable talking to because they're going to be the ones that are going to write you letters of recommendation. 
They're going to be the ones that give you advice about life after high school. If you don't even know what a scholarship is or how do you even get one, your teachers will know. So it's important that you find some teachers that can be your friends. Because I did that. I did that when I was in middle school and high school. As a matter of fact, I told you guys earlier, I went to Jackson Middle School. And that one of my teachers at Jackson, he's not alive anymore. But he taught me something that changed my life forever. And it was real simple. I turned in an essay for history fair. You know, you know how there's a science fair, there's also for history fair, maybe you guys have seen it. So I had to turn in this essay for history fair. And it was just a reg regular simple essay. And he's like, Greg, you know what? This is a good essay, but there's a way that you can make it even better. And I'm like, how? And he says, well, you can, you can add more, more different words. You can change words here and there to make it sound better. And that's the first time someone had ever told me I could do that. So basically he was teaching me how to become a better writer right and he says okay instead of saying this simple word here use this more advanced word over here he was teaching me how to use synonyms um, words that they mean they mean the same but they're two different words but one word is more respected and more more flowery more beautiful than another word and let me tell you what because he taught me that i was able to get a lot of scholarships because whenever you apply for scholarships you have to write essays it helped me get into college because you have to write essays to get into college and it even helped me these past few months whenever I basically wrote a proposal, which is kind of like an essay, asking for the, the Air Force to give me money. I had to write a 20 page paper about why they should give me money. And, and I used the same techniques that that, guy taught, that that teacher taught me in middle school. I was still using it now. And because of that, my company got a million dollars from the Air Force. Um, you know, part of it was also me going to uh, to talk to the Air Force and doing this pitch kind of like on Shark Tank, but the proposal was a big part of it. And so it, because one of my teachers was kind enough to teach me that, it changed my life forever because of how many times I've used it over and over and over again to help me get ahead in life. Um, so that's why I say, you know, don't always think of your teachers as somebody that is like, I don't know, somebody trying to keep you down or don't always think of your teachers as somebody that is like a villain in your life, like they're the bad person. Maybe you have teachers like that, that's fine. You're not gonna get along with every teacher. There are some teachers that are really trying to help you. There are teachers that are, are trying to, that care about you, that, that do want you to succeed. All of you, have, they couldn't find at least one teacher like that. And when you do find them, latch on to them, you know, become friends with them, talk to them, stay after school, stay around at lunch. And I, I promise you it's gonna help you tremendously. Even if it just helps you with your homework, it's gonna help you, but it'll probably help you with life too. Um, well, at what point do you think we should start taking uh, questions, Will? At just um, yeah, I mean, if you're end? kind of wrapping up, we can uh, start going for some Q&A. Um, mm -hmm. If any of our schools have any questions, uh, you're more than welcome to either type them in the chat or if you want to um, unmute your mic, you can come up on camera and have one of the students ask a question. Um, if anyone's interested in that, um, you would just say your name, ask the question, and then we'll answer it. Um, so while the students maybe think about some questions real quick, um, I just have one real quick. So, you know, you went to college. Um, what was your degree in? Yeah, so um, I, went, I went to college uh, at OU. I went to um, something called, um, you know, what they call undergrad. In other words, your, fourth, your first four years of college. Um, you, that's your bachelor's degree, right? So after I finished at class and school of advanced studies in high school, I graduated in 1999 from, from class in the CS. Um, I, was, I was supposed to go to Capitol Hill High School, but my mom and dad made me go to class. And, and um, anyway, so I was at class and at first I didn't like it because I didn't have very many friends. There were not a lot of Hispanic students there, so I felt kind of left out. Um, but after a while, again, I found teachers that cared about me and made friends. And I was, I was just worried about you know, graduating and, and doing well. So after class and I went to OU and my degree from the University of Oklahoma is in international studies. And international studies is not what I'm doing now, right? But at that time I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then I went to New York City for, uh, to keep going to college. Like basically I went to college after college, like, and I had a scholarship that paid for it. I had the Bill Gates scholarship and you know, Bill Gates, the Gates Foundation, is, they're the company that owns Microsoft and, you know, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint, all those programs that you use, that company own that. And so I got a scholarship from them that paid for all four years at OU and it paid for um, more college uh, in New York City. So I went to a college in New York City called Columbia University 
and I really liked it. It's, uh, it's where they made the first Spider-Man movie, right there on Columbia University campus, and uh, right there in the middle of New York City, Obama went there too, not at the same time as me, and, um, and New York City was awesome because while I was there, like, I, I did my master's degree in education, so that's why I went down the path of education. Um, you know, I've been a teacher, um, so I got my master's degree in education, and I started something called a PhD, uh, a doctorate in education. And I did it all there in New York City. And while I was in New York City, there's something called an internship where basically you get paid to work for free. And I did, I got an internship to work for free, but to learn, the reason I did this because I wanted to learn, I worked at Sesame Street in New York City. And Sesame Street was awesome because they're making educational TV shows, obviously for little kids, but, um, but it's educational and it's also you know, media, it's also learning, it's also fun which is exactly what I wanted to do. So while I was in New York, uh, I got to work Sesame. And every time I tell people that I worked at Sesame Street, the first question they ask me is, were you Big Bird? Because I'm so tall. But no, I was not Big Bird. <laughs> I wish I would have been Big Bird. I was just one of the college kids in the back helping, doing little things like eating coffee and making copies because that's what college, that's what interns do whenever you're just not starting off. But I did it to experience and to put it on my resume and to learn. Like I, got, I learned so much being behind, being there, being behind the scenes of how they make this TV show. And my job now, I still kind of make, I still do the same thing. I'm making educational media. I'm making things that people see and play with, um, but for learning reasons. And so it's related to um, the kind of work that they do at Sesame Street or anything you would see on PBS or Nick Jr. Because uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm really passionate about. Like that's what I love. That's what makes it easy for me to wake up on Monday morning and happy to go to work. Whereas not everybody has that. Some people have jobs where they wake up on Monday morning and they're like, oh man, I got the weekend's over. Now I gotta go to work. I hate my job. No, I love my job. And you're gonna love your job too when you get older. If you can find something that you really care about and you're passionate about something that you would do it for free here's how you know if you could do if you would do this job just for fun for free that's how you know it's you're passionate about it i worked at sesame street for free because it was fun because it's something i was passionate about maybe for you it's working for the thunder maybe for you it's uh you know working at the airport maybe it's um maybe it's working at this you know a nice salon doing cosmetology or or maybe it's being in the military there's something out there that you would do for free just for the fun of it and chances are that's the the job that you should be going after, the career you should be going after, but you'll get paid to do it, obviously. Um, you won't be doing it for free, but you would because you love it so much. I see some, I saw some kids putting their hands up. Was it because they had questions or I think maybe they were just stretching? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, if any uh, schools have any questions that you could think of while uh, we're going through this, uh, feel free to um, ask your question. Um, don't be afraid. It's not that hard to <laughs> come up and ask a question. Yeah. Um, Greg's got a wealth of knowledge that he is more than willing to share. Um, you know, Will, I do want to ask if there's anybody listening to this. Usually there's people who in the room, usually when you got middle school kids, it's pretty common that there's some that want to create video games. And I want to know if there's anybody in this room that wants to create or anybody listening to this that wants to make video games for their career, for their future. I saw somebody raise their hand. Yeah, somebody seemed like they would be interested in that. Raise your hand, please, if you think that you would like to make video games. I saw somebody, camera. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I see somebody just stood up. Yes, very cool. Well, if you, if you want an internship at my company because you know you want to make video games in the future or maybe you want to do a v you want to work in vr or maybe you want to work with anything related to computer science maybe you maybe you, you like computer science um you know doing software um design programming on in the computers that's what i do too i do a lot of uh, programming on the soft with software coding if you're interested in coding if you're interested in software development if you're interested in vr video games Tell your teacher, hey, I want to I want to talk to that guy that I saw in the video. Remember, we saw the guy in the video that does VR. I want to talk to him. And if there's anybody listening to this that wants to do an internship at my company, whether it's even just one day a week for two hours, or maybe it's just you know one week um, during spring break, um, something. I mean, 
we can, we can work it out to where you can come and I can teach you what I know, some of the basic things that I know. It'll look good on your resume. It'll look good so that you can get other jobs in the future. And maybe I can teach you a thing or two that you didn't know before. And, and maybe by the end of it, you'll know, I, yes, I definitely want to work in this kind of work. Or maybe you won't know. Maybe you'll still be, you'll still be confused and you'll be like, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this or not. I think I really want to be a doctor. That's fine. The more information you have, the better it helps you to make that decision. So you'll never be saying, what if? I wish, what if I would have done that thing with Greg Hallman with VR instead of working here in, in, in Griffin with my uncle? Um, I don't want that to happen. You know, come try it. Come, come try the VR with me. You know, I'll put a VR headset on, to, on you and you can, you can test it out and see what it's like to be in VR. Um, and, I can, and I can talk to you more about my career. If there's anybody here that's interested in that, all you got to do, it's easy. Wherever the adult is in your room, when this is all over, go up to them and tell them that you want to get in contact with me. And chances are they'll know how to get you in contact with me and we'll make it work. Awesome. Yeah, um, that would be that'd be sweet. You know, I whenever I was in school, I never had anyone um, come <laughs> up and ask uh, if you know they wanted to do some kind of um uh, apprenticeship or internship or anything like that but uh if any of the teachers are listening um you should have greg's email um if you don't um you can contact us at the k20 center and we can get that to you um if there's no other questions uh thank you so much for your time greg it was awesome hearing about your experience um it's always cool seeing um the different things you can do in vr it's definitely a you know an early stage of its um, lifespan VR hasn't been around very long so it's kind of cool getting to see the different aspects of um, VR just outside of video games um, so we yeah. appreciate you coming on um, and if any of the teachers get in contact with you that's awesome um, we appreciate all the students coming out um, before you guys go your teacher should have a um, rapid feedback form for you to fill out um, if you wouldn't mind filling that out that'd be awesome and Greg you're good to go um, thank well, you. Oh, you got one more thing? Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, All right, you're good. Thank, sorry to interrupt you, Will. And it's my pleasure. Thank you for those kind words that you said about me. I see somebody that does have a question, and um, they keep putting their hands up. Uh, um, are they scared? No, I think they do want to ask, but I don't think they know how to ask, right? I mean, I can. Listen, there okay, there you go. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. So my question or the kids' questions were, how old do they have to be to kind of like come and work with you and like be mentored by you? They have to be at least four years old. Oh, well. <laughs> You're welcome. No words, I have 30 of those. They're coming right now. <laughs> you, have to be, you have to be able to talk. You have to be able to walk. And, and you have to be able to get to my office. Um, my office, is, my office is in downtown Oklahoma City. I don't always office out of Mexico. I'm just here visiting family. But, um, but yeah, I'm usually in downtown Oklahoma City, and we can make something work. It could be, it could be a one-day thing, or it could be more than once. Um, but I would, I would love to. And, um, yeah, I mean, even if they're middle school, that's fine. Um, awesome. You, yeah, it, you know, to get experience and stuff, um, it, it, yeah, it would be great. You know, I'll tell you something. When I was in sixth grade, like I said, I went to Jackson Middle School. It was a very rough middle school that we had a lot of gang activity. And all of my friends were in gangs like GBC and BGM and Juaritos and Southside Locals. And it was hard um, because they wanted me to be in gangs with them. But there was a counselor at my middle school named Pam Green, who was Pam King, who was awesome. And she took me to the, uh, the Oklahoman newspaper. And when she took me to, back then it was called the Daily Oklahoman. And I met the cartoonist. He's not alive anymore, but I got to spend one whole day with the cartoonist there at the Oklahoma newspaper. And because at that time I wanted to make cartoons, for, that was my job. Like my dream job was to make cartoons. And it still kind of is. Um, but I got to meet this cartoonist who does political cartoons, not the same as Nickelodeon cartoons, but still it was awesome to meet him. And he, and he gave, me, gave me a lot of gifts and like some of his drawings. And it's something that I'll always remember. So if I got to do that when I was in sixth grade and it helped me so much, of course I would want to offer that to a sixth grader as well, a seventh grader, eighth grader, fifth grader, whatever. 